Hi guys, a few people have been asking about the touch input. So this video is just a quick unedited video of me talking through how the touch input works. Uh, so this is Platformer Pro imported into Unity 5 free version. Uh, and what I have done also is switch to the Android platform. Now the touch input uh, testing relies on Unity Remote. So the touch input can't be clicked with the mouse. This is because it uses finger ID to try and track where your finger is and ideally give better detection of left, right, up, down and so on. But it is a little trick. You just need to make sure that if you're testing in the editor that you use Unity Remote. So with that in mind, let's make sure Unity Remote is working. Uh, you need to download the Unity Remote for app from Play Store or from the App Store. Uh, for Android, you can check if your device is attached by running ADB devices and you should see your device in the list. Make sure you've got USB de debug enabled and the USB cables plugged in. Um, and what we're going to do, we'll just open one of the samples, let's use command bro sample. So if we hit play, you should see that appear on your Unity remote. Now there won't be any controls at this point, but we're just confirming here that the remote is working. If that step is not working, I guess go to Google and uh, have a search around. Some people recommend restarting editor, restarting the phone, and so on and so forth. There's a bunch of doc uh, documents and help available. So you do need the Unity remote to be working. So now what we're going to do, we'll use this same scene, and we're going to grab the Command Bro multi-platform input. So let's have a look at this input enabler. So basically what's happening here is this multi-input has different inputs set up and it uses this input enabler to turn the right one on based on your runtime platform. But you'll see there's a force match checkbox here. So this matches any handheld device with platform Android. But we're just going to click this force match box. And what that will do is ensure that regardless of where we run it, even if it's in the editor, that we're going to run it as if we were running on Android. So if we press play now, we should see the controls appear on the screen. And you also should see those controls on your Unity remote. And if you do, you should be able to touch those controls, which I'm doing right now. And it should control your character. So let's drill a little bit deeper into the touch input. There's a few things to note. Firstly, in this touch input complete object, we have a camera. This is a camera used to draw the UI controls. We then have axis configuration. So inside the axis, there's an up button and a down button. This has the touch button component and a box collider for up and the same configuration for down. There is an option here which if ticked means you have to start the touch inside the button. You can't just drag your finger over it. So for the axis you would typically have that off and for the buttons you would typically have that on. It's worth noting that you typically don't need to set this stuff up. Instead, you just drop the prefab into your scene. However, I will walk through the details just so you get a feel for how it all works. So these objects are just Box Collider 2D. They have a visual sprite inside them, just so you can see where it is. The two axis buttons are wrapped up by this script called a two-button touch axis which has a button for positive and a button for negative. 
The same configuration is done for left and right. The buttons are simply the touch button script in a box or circle collider. Any kind of collider can work. There's no need for the axis to wrap the two buttons together. Finally, the touch input script allows you to specify which game objects to use for the axis of horizontal, vertical, as well as a jump button, run button, and any number of action buttons. The final piece to this puzzle is the arrangement of the buttons. So if you're using a fixed resolution, you could just position these game objects manually. However, in order to fit with a large variety of devices, we use the simple scripts align to left, align to bottom, align to right, and optionally align to top. These scripts basically move the game object or offset the game object from the boundaries of the camera. So let's press play. And you'll see if I change my aspect ratio and press play again, the controls will maintain this distance from the edge. So in other words, they'll always be offset by two game units from the left and two game units from the bottom for this axis. And the buttons will be always two game units from the right and two game units from the bottom. If we change this, for example, to four, we'll see that the buttons are further offset from both the left, uh, the right and the bottom. So this just enables us to ensure that regardless of screen size, the controls are near the edges of the screen. You can use the input enabler to define different types of touch inputs. So for example, if certain devices, let's say a tablet versus a handheld, uh, want it, you wanted to have different configuration, maybe different buttons or different button arrangements, you can specify details about what kind of player it is and you can also use a regular expression to match exactly certain devices or you can tick a box if it's a large screen device, in other words a tablet. So what, what I'm saying here for example, let's imagine we wanted a different configuration for a tablet. In this one we might move things closer to the edge of the screen or we might scale the whole object so it's a little smaller to work better with the larger screen. And in this input enabler we could add a new condition So we're going to change condition 2 so it matches before condition 3 and we're going to say device type is a handheld, we're going to use platform of Android, this time we're going to click the large screen box and we're going to drag it to the complete tablet input. Now if you run this on a tablet you'll get this input enabled instead of the touch input complete. So let's pretend we're on a tablet by clicking the force match button and hitting play. We'll see that our arrows are smaller, our inputs are smaller, and I'll accentuate that. By changing these values. 
And I will also just move my axis a little bit. I was a little bit too far off the screen there. So with smaller values, we're probably okay with two. And we'll see we have smaller controls which might better fit on a tablet. There's also a multi-platform disabler. And although we're, oh sorry, an option to make this a disabler by clicking disable first match. Um, and that allows you not just for inputs, but for anything, menus, um, pop-ups, to have different objects used for different types of platforms. So finally, let's look at setting up touch input in a new scene. So what we're going to do is grab the template for a quick test geometry. We're going to change our camera to orthographic. We're going to drop in a basic character. We're going to delete the very simple input and instead we're going to drop in a multi-platform input. So if we hit play, we should have a basic game in place. And this multi-platform input comes with a touch input. So if we pretend we're on an Android device by clicking force match, We'll see two controls because I've forgot to turn off the UI layer. So we'll just turn off the UI layer in the main camera. And we'll see we'll have input. Oops, I just hit the wrong button. And if you have a remote set up as we discussed before, just give it a second, you should be able to control it like I'm doing now with the Unity remote. Now the touch input just has a jump button by default, but if you expand that you'll see there's a template for action button which you can turn on. I think by, by default it sticks in the middle right here, which obviously doesn't look that great, but you can use the align scripts. For example, align right instead of align middle. Drop in the camera we want to align to and put in a value like 3, press play, and we'll see now we have an action button. We could also put in a line bottom. Maybe we offset that a little higher. Drop the camera reference so we know what we're offsetting from and hit play. Now we have a button up here. And again, that will change to match the shape of the device screen.